<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Welcome. I, I wonder how many of you find yourselves a little bit surprised that on a grim November cold evening of the year, you've chosen to come forth to spend the evening with the stage of life, which is probably the grim November of the soul, <laughs> as far as you can tell, looking back on your own life stages. I hope by the end of the evening, you might feel a little bit differently about your own adolescence, as well as the adolescence that any of your children are embarking into. Sunday morning after the sixth grade potlucks, I realized as I woke up that I was just having a dream in which I and a child were about to enter a long dark tunnel. And two uh, very helpful attendants were helping us prepare our candles, which were in a glass, and we, our candles were lit. And then the child stepped forth and I started to follow. And then I realized that I should be leading in case we met any difficulties along the way in our long dark tunnel. So I stepped in front of the, tile, the child and off we went and up I woke. And uh, we do know of course that our children are in certain ways our guides and yet in other ways we need to be the guides for our children. And tonight I will try my best to be the guide for us, at least in the first part of our evening, and um, enter together this world of adolescence. I don't know what kind of memories you have. Many people have no memories of adolescence. They have closed the door on them. Uh, some people certainly look back on adolescence as their life stage of the greatest pain, of the greatest loneliness, sometimes of the of uh, the greatest despair. Sometimes perhaps everyone, I'm not certain, but perhaps everyone wonders whether at some point to continue living or not. To some degree, that question. A time often of profound disillusionment with the world around. Although, also perhaps a time of the greatest awareness, the most acute, astute insight and perception, and perhaps kinds of at least feelings and perhaps images of the greatest of possibilities, and as a decent guide at least, um, before we can really embark, of course we have to look back before we can go forward. So let's just remind ourselves of a little bit of context, which we all know that in the first life stage, the child devotes itself, devotes all of its forces virtually to bringing this body, which is almost a third head, or maybe even a half when it's first born, mostly head, of bringing this body down into the earth and helping the organs, the, the physical form, become an instrument suitable for the destiny of the child to eventually become fulfilled. The physical body is really the primary development during these first years in which the head is already the most formed and however during which the child's consciousness or awareness is living not in the head but in fact in the limbs itself, the child really lives into the world through will activity of all kinds and above all imitating 
parents and teachers and really the whole world around as the medium, as the means of learning. And as the change of teeth signal a degree of completion of this preparation of the physical instrument, the being of the child devotes virtually all of its forces, even though, of course, there is still some physical growth, but devotes virtually all of its forces to what we can call the life body, which forms and informs the physical body itself, which helps give, give rhythms of breathing in and breathing out, of sleeping in, of waking out, which helps the rhythmic system of the heart and the lungs become full, full the middle trunk gets its proportion and during this very harmonious time of, of enlivening the child's whole experience of the world, the natural mode of consciousness is through feeling and the learning comes primarily through the authority of the good parents and of the good teachers and that brings us then up at puberty to this great threshold. <laughs>